Hey gang, so a quick recap of part one. We started with a plastic background, attached a styrofoam sheet, cut out a channel to serve as our little hideaway for our fountain tube, cemented in with great stuff, took some styrofoam, broke it up into chunks, arranged the chunks in kind of a natural setting, used great stuff to anchor them in and fill in all the gaps, then used a knife and a chisel to cut away the sharp edges, then hooked it up to a pump and saw how the water flowed to gauge how our success was going. Now in this video, we're going to take that background and we're going to finish it. I went outside and I collected some regular sand. Then going back, I began working away at the background and just kind of finishing it out. I found any of the rough pieces that I didn't like and I just kind of cut and chiseled them away. Since this is going to be kind of a platform for plants to grow in, I want to channel out as much of the inner space as I can so that the plants have more room to grow and I can pack in more grow media. So any of the excess that I really didn't want, now is the time for me to shave it away. Once that's done, I took some silicone. You want something that's kind of pure silicone as much as possible. You don't want anything that says it's anti-mildew or anti-mold because that means it's going to have chemicals that will leach into your system, and you don't want that. But regular silicone is fine. After I draw a bead around any of these surfaces that I want to work on, then I take my gloved hand and I rub a nice sheen over it. Then I take a scoop of the, my sand material and I pat it in, making sure the sand evenly coats the entire surface of any of the styrofoam that's been coated in the silicone. Definitely make sure you have gloves for this, because that silicone does not come off of skin easily. You'll notice that I'm only uh, dressing certain areas at a time. That's because I'm going to have a two-tone background. I'm using the sand to make more of a rockwork accent. So a lot of these ledges are going to look like sides of a cliff, with rock ledges coming out that plants are growing out of. And then the other surfaces are going to look more like tree branches and roots. But that'll come later. Right now I'm only doing the parts that I want to look like rocks. It's really hard to do this without getting messy. You'll notice that my gloved hands just start becoming kind of an amalgamation of silicone and sand, making it kind of difficult to work with. Might be a good idea to change gloves every once in a while while you're doing this. It's definitely tricky to apply to some of these areas, especially on the fine points. You kind of have to use your hands to cup all the material and make sure that it comes in contact with all the surfaces that you want, and then just kind of work it in. Remember, not all that material is going to stick. You just want to make sure that all the silicone comes in contact with the material, otherwise you'll have bald spots. Notice how I'm being careful to work around all of that kind of knobby textured stuff that has all the great stuff product on it. I want all that great stuff area to look more like the tree branches and more of the, the plant and root material, since it has a nice texture and shape for that. All the flat surfaces just seem more like rock work to me. So I'm addressing all of the flat, even surfaces right now, and I'm saving that great stuff kind of knobby texture for later. After you're satisfied with your work, you'll want to shake it out. Remember, a lot of this material is not going to stick to the silicone, so you're going to get all that excess off. And there's a lot of excess to go around. And now it's time to turn it upside down and hit all the surfaces that I couldn't reach before. I definitely don't want any bolt spots. All that white silicone would show up or that white uh, styrofoam, rather, would show up pretty 
abhorrently. It's really nice once in a while just to work with a nice flat surface instead of all those nooks and crannies before. At this point, all that styrofoam is starting to look like stucco. If you live in Florida, pretty much all the houses down there are made with stucco now. Just food for thought. I definitely like my aquaponic backgrounds to be stucco. So remember how I said we were going to use a different material for the great stuff surfaces? Well, this is coconut choir. Coconut core, choir. I don't really know how you're supposed to pronounce it. It's basically compressed coconut husks. So you break this stuff into chunks, and then you run it between your hands to turn it into kind of a dust. And for all that application, I'm using a brown silicone. Again, make sure you don't get anything that says mold resistant on it. And so this is going over all the identified surfaces before that I want to look like tree roots. I deliberately built in kind of a, a network of channels and veins and root structures. And those are going to contrast very well with the lighter sand background that I've created. And having a different color silicone really helps to differentiate that. After it's all evenly coated, I grab a handful of my coconut material and I just press it up against all of the silicone coated surfaces. Again, you don't have to be delicate now because all those other surfaces have already dried and it's got a coating of sand protecting it. So if I get coconut material on the wrong surface, it's not going to be a big deal. You're going for coverage, not neatness here. This is a great opportunity to see how what I designed is really going to show up well in this background. This big fork was deliberately designed to look kind of like a tree branch coming out from a rock ledge. And now when it's got a nice coating of this brown silicone, it really starts to look like a piece of art here. Look at that brown color, just really transform that. It goes from looking like a construction project to looking like something I found out in my backyard. And with a coating of coconut material, it's going to look even more natural. And since this area up here was a lot more rounded, I wanted this to also have the coconut coating, because that just seems more like a hollowed out tree trunk to me. Any of the flat or jagged surfaces just seem like rock work to me, and those got covered in sand, but anything rounded and knobby, that's going to be some kind of tree material. Once it's all nice and coated, I can grab a handful of the coconut and apply it. Just drop it on there and pat it in to ensure you've got good contact. And now the background is basically finished. All I have to do is get all the excess off. Again, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It looks nothing like the mass of styrofoam and construction material that it was before. Just like we did with the sand, tilt it upside down and get all the excess coconut material off. And it is done. Look at that. Now if that doesn't look natural or professional, I don't know what does. All that remains is to set up the terrarium with that in the background and then have the false bottom for the water to drain through, as well as hook up the pumps to the tube and add sand into the grow bed. So here it is now with tropical plants that I purchased off Amazon all put into the background and the sand grow bed. It's just looking great. I've got a timer that runs the pump uh, five minutes a day, several times a day, and the plants thrive off it. I've also got some crested geckos in there and they just love their habitat. I couldn't be more pleased with this, and I'm glad you all were here, and hopefully we'll do a lot more cool projects together. See ya!